Hello, hello, welcome back. I it's been another day since the last vlog. I said I was filming it right after the one before, um, but I didn't get round to it. I'm very, very tired. Um, I'm going away tomorrow, and I've still got loads of editing to do. Um, one thing that I'm trying out this episode, as you uh, I've mentioned in the last episode, is I'm doing uh, manual focus. So throughout the episode, I'm gonna be holding on to my lens and shifting it in and out of focus so hopefully you won't be hearing too much of the annoying noise because at least the motor won't be going in the autofocus as it has been before right so as i said in the last episode this video is going to be about my science collection of stuff down there i've got a load of like bottles for chemistry stuff polystyrene i'll talk about that in a minute I'll talk about that in a minute but for now i'll start off with here so about maybe a Three months ago, I started collecting elements. Um, this remains a sulfur experiment. Move it over to the side. Here's my element collection. They're all in different vials. Crap, I just knocked into everything. Uh, there's glass everywhere in my room. I'm just, I I'm overflowing with stuff. I've gone a little bit crazy with all of this, but you know what? That's that's um, that's to be expected. Anyway, so with my collection so far, as I showed you again in the last episode. My periodic table i've got it all ticked off the ones that i have got so those are ticked off and they're over here there are some in my radiation box um because some of the samples that i've got for example i'll come back over here i've got thorium ticked off now i have thorium i don't have pure thorium metal so i still have it but i don't have it pure but i will be having that in the future but i do have thorium um uranium i have uranium glass that's in the radiation box. Neptunium. I have traces of neptunium and an old americium smoke detector button. And I have americium as well. I have a lot of americium and I have more coming. As I said also, in, for the next episode, I'll be filming that when I get back. Because I need to wait for the other stuff to arrive. Um, because I'm going to have a load more in that radiation collection. And all the ones I miss out from the element collection that are radioactive, I'll be showing in that video. Um, including radium, which is actually a pretty good sample. I bought that online. Um, I'm trying to find a better sample, maybe from an antique store, from radium clocks or something. But anyway, I'll talk about it in the, in the next episode. For now, I'll go over to my current collection. Uh, I'm going to try and move some of this stuff out of the way. Like, I've got candles to burn sulfur in and stuff, so... It's a bit of a mess, but um, we'll, we'll work through it. So I'll try and keep this video to a minimum. I'll just run all three of these. So... That's... Uh, that's focus this camera on here. So I've got tellurium. It's going to take me a little while to get used to this, but you know. Tellurium. Iodine. Gold. Uh, gold's small, so you might be able to see too much of it, but there's gold in there. Lead. Little uh, shot pellets. Yttrium. That's, uh, as I say, I apologise for the focus of this episode because I am useless at manual focuses because I haven't ever used it before. So we will be learning this together. Crap. There we go. Tin. Cobalt. Manganese, Samarium, Chromium, Titanium, Calcium, that's stored under oil to stop it reacting with the air. Although, to be honest, a lot of it has already reacted with the air. Um, now this one I got online uh, from a from periodic, periodic element guy. He's a, uh, I think he's British, but he works from Israel. He sells a whole load of elements. And uh, it's fluorine, but because fluorine is so reactive, it's calcium fluorite, which is basically the closest anybody can get without being like a government specialized chemist. It's ridiculous how reactive uh, the fluorine is. Fluorine, fluorine is. Um, Antimony, cadmium, highly carcinogenic, lovely. 
I've got some more cadmium and a couple of other samples in the box that I will show you in a minute. It, I will have all of the samples here as well, but I've got extras in there, so I'll show you that in a moment. Indium. Nickel. Well, I just threw the nickel across the room. Lovely. Nickel. Mercury tilt switches. So the mercury is in the switches down there. You may be able to see the shiny sort of drop that's bouncing around in there. It's mercury. Niobium wire. Bismuth. Tungsten. These are little tungsten um, filaments out of light bulbs, so it's not very much, but it's like six light bulbs worth, so there's not much in each light bulb. Uh, hafnium. Hafnium wire. Copper. Got some copper wire and a copper strip. Zinc. Gallium. Gallium is surprisingly heavy. I never expected it to be as heavy as it is. Um, obviously, it's not like really heavy, but it's it's a lot heavier than you would think it to be for for what it is. Um, but if I I could technically melt that in, I think it's thirty one point five degrees or something Celsius. I'm not sure. Um, I used to know. I did check it and then I did it. Melted it from the bottle I got a bit from into here, and then it's solidified into the vial nicely. Oh, germanium. Phosphorus, I got this from a match head. Red phosphorus isn't as reactive as something like white or purple phosphorus, which I might try and make in the future if I get enough phosphorus, but it could be pretty dangerous. Zirconium. Gadolinium. I appreciate a lot of these samples do look very similar to each other because, let's be honest, they're not that all different, but they're all different elements, so, you know. Molybdenum. Lithium. Got this out of a battery. Um, I also forgot to stop the air... I also forgot to let the air out before stopping the uh, vial, so I've had a little bit of an oil leak around this thing, so it's a bit sticky. Great. Um, selenium. Very strange crystalline shape of selenium. Pretty cool stuff. Sulfur. Typical, um, yellow powder. Very smelly, as I found out. So I've got, like, a little sulfur experiment going on here at the moment. I've just sort of, like, been poking it around and, uh, melting it, solidifying it, maybe reacting it with a little bit of chlorine that I've got in here. Um, by making chlorine gas and keeping it that way up, because if I tip it over... Chlorine is denser than there, so it'll just float straight down and out. Which is why I'm holding this vial upright, because that's chlorine in there. You can't see it very well. If I hold up against the... Uh, there, you can sort of see a very minimal greenish tinge. But it's not very showing up very well on the camera. Uh, I've got aluminium. Not very exciting. Aluminium foil. Not really much a better way of getting aluminium, to be honest. Uh, magnesium. Carbon, which is like a graphite pellet. I've also got some other carbon rods that I'll show you in a moment. And then finally, in the vial here, silicon. Uh, right, now, on to all of this lot in here. Now, this is an absolute mess, so I'm going to try and uh, get around all of this. Which we get into here. Got some uh, nice magnesium sulfate salt, Epsom salt. Very useful. Uh, right, that's for melting sulfurin. I have a lot, a lot of sulfury stuff in here, so I'm going to try and not get it anywhere. But, whole bag of sulfur, that's about 180 grams left of sulfur in there. So it's a pretty large amount. Um, I've got the leftovers of some other experiments. And then I've got more niobium wire. Quite a lot of that. Uh, cadmium control rods for reactors. I'm actually not totally sure how I managed to get hold of them, but you know what? 
pretty cool. Uh, magnesium ribbon, a lot of it. Uh, what else? Bismuth metal, quite a considerable chunk, very heavy. Molybdenum, very considerable size. Uh, molybdenum. What else have I got here? A massive iron rod that a friend gave me. I'm not quite sure whether it's magnet. It's it's magnetic in terms of things stick to it, but I don't know if it picks anything up. I have tried it on some things. It doesn't seem to be very strong. It's supposed to be a magnet. It's an iron one. I also got some bismuth crystals. Pretty cool. Um, that remains my galleon bottle. Test tube. And it may not be very interesting, but Tepsi table salt. It's a giant salt crystal. Got that from Polish salt mines. Uh, and I got a load of other random bags of trace stuff in there. Um, for over here, I haven't got too many chemicals. I've got some magnesium sulfate solution, zinc sulfate in here. Sort of just looks like water. Um, and then. Copper sulfate at the back. Try and pull that out very carefully. Bluish tinge. Quite nice. Um, I've got the remains of my vials back there. Chlorine bottle, which I'm going to try not to stick there. So, yeah, there's chlorine in there. Which I'm going to be very careful with. Chlorine is not something you want to be messing around with. So, yeah. Great for me. Uh, I've got some vinegars, some salts, so that I can do some experiments with chlorine um, clips and things for electrolysis experiments loads of extra vials in here um, for the next lot of elements that I get uh, what else have I got over here I've got pipettes um, let's see I've got a UV torch over there as well I'll be showing this off in the next episode because that's useful for making things fluoresce Radioactive things for resting. Pretty cool. Um, matches, mineral oil, or pets. Yeah, that's pretty much it for this part. There's my Geiger counter there, which I, again I will definitely be showing off in the next episode for my radioactive collection. Um, which I can definitely say it's going to be a pain to do because I've wrapped everything up so well. Uh, anyway, down to here. I'm going to move all the sulfury stuff out of the way now. So this is a makeshift neutron oven that I'm in the middle of making. Cast iron is good for this because it's a hydrocarbon, um, so it contains neutrons very well, stops the spread of them. Um, because it's white, it technically can reflect them. I'm not quite sure of the science of neutrons. I have been looking very a lot into it. Um, but I know that it can be useful for making a neutron oven to um, transmutate other elements from other ones, the specific ones I want to kind of do is bismuth into polonium and bismuth into acetine. But obviously, it, we trace amounts that could only be vaguely detected with a guy counter, potentially. Um, but it's more of a theory experiment than anything else. So that's that. Over here, I have got, well, the endless postage back there from all the stuff that I've ordered and got. Um, and then in here, I've got bunch of chemicals that I'll be showing you in a second and back here as well one of the other things that I got is hydrogen peroxide it's 12% hydrogen peroxide which is fairly corrosive so I don't want that on my hands um, it is light sensitive so it decomposes to light to turn back into water and oxygen so I'm gonna put that back in the dark over there so that it doesn't do that and I'm not just left with a bottle of water um, but anyway, so in here I've got the remains of the glass that I smashed up to get the tungsten. So it's just a load of mashed up light bulbs. Uh, oh, an ex electrolysis experiment with a battery that I did here. I'm going to use this to pick it up because, well, that's corrosive salts. They sort of just went all around the edge of the container um, and formed a strange jelly at the bottom. I'm not too sure about that, but it's not something I really want to mess around with. It's very odd corrosive stuff. Um, the carbon rods I was saying about, I've got here. So I extracted them out of carbon zinc batteries. Um, quite useful for electrolysis. Um, 
bottle of oil. Uh, loads of stuff. Oh yeah, I think this is boric acid, but I have to be honest, I'm not actually sure. And don't you dare leave me a comment saying it's cocaine, because this is not cocaine or anything like that. Please let me just justify that. Um, clarify that more like. I believe this is one of those silicon... I'm not sure if that's a silicon... Great. Silicon dioxide patch to dry stuff out. I'm not sure if it's silicon dioxide or not. Silica gel, I believe it's called. Uh, what else? I have the remains of some batteries in there. Um, some electrolyte. It's not very fun to look at. It's just a load of black mulch. Uh, I think that wraps up for that bit there. Underneath here, um, I've got, again, more remains of batteries, which I will actually have a little look at. Because this is manganese dioxide. Um, also, I need to keep that away from my hydrogen peroxide because manganese dioxide is a catalyst to, my, uh, to hydrogen peroxide, which makes it decompose a lot faster. Which I don't want getting into anything else. It's also very black, so if I get this on my floor, I am just going to be in death. And it's going to be a pain. Clean, but manganese dioxide, electrolyte. That's the batteries. Um, and then what else I got? Uh, I'll open up my electrolysis experiment and I'll show you that in a moment. I've got that all over here. There's a load of salt all around the edge of it. So I will just get that out and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I gloved up for this part because, well, there's a load of corrosive salts in here. I've got some sodium hydroxide, I believe, in here. Um, oh wow, that smells like swimming pools. That's really strong. Oh, <coughs> that's really strong. Um, so in here, I have hydrogen and chlorine gas. Now, hydrogen... What? <laughs> that's so strong. Hydrogen chloride gas. Um, technically bubbling through the fluid, it should make it acidic, but there's also hy uh, sodium hydroxide. Can't remember which one's the anode and which one's the cathode. But I've got it all connected up to a cell underneath here. So I have the two. Oh, that's not good. I have just seen everything that has been leaking through the bottom of here. Wow, that's corrosive. Um, yeah, I'm going to need to deal with that. I've got like a light fitting that's slowly melting down in there. Um, yeah, this is why I gloved up. I'll try and show you this. So I did have a battery cell in there which was working perfectly uh sorry i had to bash the mic and a load of salt that's not good uh yeah i had a lot of um battery technology down there should we say um and the corrosive fluids up here and they have now come all the way through the bottom of here fallen through where i've sealed the tank and now they're all over the bottom of here, they're slowly corroding away my carbon rod. Um, hmm, I don't know what to do with that now. And they've made like a pool of corrosive fluids, which is mixed with all of the polystyrene that I put in there to support it. It's made a strange gloop. That I don't really want to mess with right now. Uh, that's not really what I wanted to happen. Yeah, I'm going to need to fix that. That's not good. So, yeah, that's not fun. Oh, ow, 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 ow. That's hot. And I don't know why that's hot. That burned. Actually, I think I might just electrocute myself. Lovely. <laughs> Sudden burning sensation went through my finger. Apparently, uh, I think I had a hole in these gloves. Um, yeah, that's very corrosive. That hurts. Ow. Right, so I'm going to have to deal with this at some stage. Um, there may have just been some residual discharge of electricity, I'm not sure. Um, yeah. I would want this to be a lot more informative, but the fact that my brain is mushed up, it's extremely hot, and I've just burned myself or electrocuted myself, I'm not sure which, on all of this. Um, not good. Yeah, that's going to need sorting out ASAP. 
But anyway, yeah, that's my electrolytic cell. And with that, I made a bottle of chlorine slash um, hydrochloric acid, which is now back here. Go back in my room. I'll try and bring this across the camera. CL2 bottle. Um, technically, the amount of chlorine gas looks absolutely tiny because it's right at the top of the bottle there. But actually, bubbling all the way through the fluid, all of this is like maybe 0.05 molar hydrochloric acid. So, probably still fairly corrosive. Um, but anyway, that's that. So, yes, I've got chlorine. Lovely. I did a hydrogen peroxide experiment with a rusty nail which produced iron hydroxide and what else? oxygen gas. So this bottle's just full of oxygen gas, very, very compressed. Uh, I can't even squeeze that bottle in at all. So, yeah, like a sitting oxygen bomb, to be honest. Um, what else have I got back here? Another chlorine bottle and another chlorine bottle, which is remains of a bleach experiment that I did. I'm worried that's going to go through the bottle, because that looks like it's already cutting through the bottle, but remains of a bleach experiment chlorine in there stinks really bad oh, and loads of sulfurous stuff all around here concerning me what was on my finger then that hurt a lot still hurting now um but yeah as you can probably tell from all of this i went a little bit science crazy over the last little while since i made a video um and i've done a lot of stuff I think I can actually see what's happened here with the cell. I think the glue that I used to hold it down has literally been corroded away from the inside of the cell. This is what the cell looks like from the inside. Um, and then these are carbon electrodes. I can't remember which one's the anode or which one's the cathode, but I don't think it matters anymore. But I put the bottle filled with saline solution up to the top. Um, and then put the bottle over one of the electrodes. I think it was that one that made the chlorine. So that should be the anode. So then I placed it over the top of there. It just sort of bubble up and uh, produce the chlorine gas. Displace the water and uh, electrolyze the water. But yeah, that's that's not a good situation to be in. That I've got all this stuff sort of leaking out of here. I saw it wasn't getting good about two weeks ago, but it's got ten times worse. So yeah, I'm going to need to sort that out at some stage, but for now that's going to be put away and I'm going to forget about it. And sometime in the next year or so I'm going to open that back up and be horrified again. Oh man, the smell of chlorine in my room is bad. Uh, yeah, I think that mainly concludes the element collection, the chemical side of it. In the next episode I'll do the radioactive collection as well. Um, but I'll wait till the next episode because I've got a load of stuff to arriving. I'm waiting to arrive. So I'll wait till then. Um, but yeah, I went science crazy. Um, this is what my room looks like at the moment. I should continue to do that. Uh, that's one thing I probably will mention as well. It's sort of the chemical side of things. Uh, I made a little bit of plant collection out here as well. So I've got endless amounts of plants and cacti and stuff that I'm keep stabbing myself on. Over here I decided to try and grow some mould. Um, it seems to be working. Got some strange bubbling genus of plants in there so yes it's concerning um but yeah great i also planted i got like about four years ago i plant, uh, got some ricin seeds that sounds really bad ricin's a toxin um but the seeds were dried away and they haven't been exposed to air in like four years so i decided to get them out and try and plant them and i tried to plant them in those containers over there there's a load of them and it's all really humid didn't work same thing I tried with here. There seems to be some mutation thing going on there, so I'm going to see what that turns into. But sadly, no ricin, so I might try and get that and grow that as well. I might show some more of the plant stuff in the future. I don't know at the moment. I doubt it. Um, probably just stick with the chemistry. If you want me to do some reaction videos, I will. Um, but I'll probably just keep it to myself and uh, continue with the videos as I normally would. If you want me to do that, tell me, and I will. Uh, but yeah, for now, I'm going to go and sort out the mess that I've got all over the place now.
and I'll see you guys in the next episode for the radiation video and then after that the Iceland and after that New York. See you for that, I'll continue editing and uh, yeah.